Oh. Look at that then. What the fuck? Mate, have you ever seen anything that's so weird, such colour? Look at the fucking sky. How <laughs> fucked up was that then? This is Steve Olson with uh, WSO. It is August 8th, 2017, continuing our research of what's going on in our skies and finding all kinds of cool stuff. Um, this particular image is from Third Phase of the Moon and it was borrowed by Kelly Hannibus and she put it up on her Facebook page. Kelly's a good friend of WSO's, uh, a great friend and supporter, and a fellow researcher. Um, we're seeing, what's interesting about this particular manifestation in New Zealand that we're seeing, and I'll show you a couple of different shots that we got, but the ones from third phase of the moon were, were pretty interesting because the object didn't stay on a state, steady state direction, okay? It seems to actually be changing directions, and oh my gosh, look at that red cloud behind it. We didn't see the red cloud before because I think it was too far away in March. Dave Dobbs and I will be discussing this in depth today, um, for sure. Um, let's take a look at a couple of the pictures that we found of it. This again, this one actually was from the, I think from the South, South United States, again, seeing that same object again. And um, now we're starting to see exactly the object that Dave Dobbs predicted in his model. And when you say, you know, does it, it comes up in certain areas. Let me illustrate um, the, the problem with, orbital dynamics with something that is on a different ecliptic plane, okay? And I'll illustrate it with this picture. This is, and, and what I'm trying to get across to you is you're not going to see it exactly in the same part of the sky every part of the day because the other system is on a different ecliptic plane. So here's X southwest. Southwest, west, looking to where the sun sets at 529 Alaska AM. And this thing drops below the ecliptic or drops below the earth's line it's in an opposite direction of us and it's on a different ecliptic plane and that's why we will see it in the southwest and then you will see it in the northeast because it's on a different ecliptic plane you get what i'm saying so um that's why we have to kind of keep our three-dimensional knowledge open these are two different solar systems with two different ecliptic planes meeting each other things will be seen in different parts of the of the sky at different types of the day we're trying to get to the point where we can predict that, uh, but we're not there yet. Of course, we're seeing the big halo in the sky again. We see that a lot. Look at this. Now, I don't think it's a planet, okay? But it is so cool looking. Look at this from, uh, New, uh, from Mexico. This one is a little different, though. This is a highly um, sophisticated filter that this person is using. Not exactly like a welding mask because it allows more natural light through um, an IR light. And there we've got the big orb, little orb, in this shot. Pretty interesting. I wonder if it's that close. I wonder if it's there. I don't know. Could, is, could that be a, a lens flare of some kind? I don't know, man. I don't think so. I don't think this is a lens flare at all. This is what I think the actual size of this thing is, um, of one of the planets, one of the bodies in it. Are, are, that's the, the actual straight-on shot of it. And that's at 10 a.m. looking east right after the sunrise interesting here's one from sharon harbeck oh by the way there's an interesting rumor out there right now that sharon and i colluded to uh oh, what did we do we took money from somebody and she picked up a money order in idaho or something and i picked one up in montana guys they're trying to start all kinds of rumors about sharon and me and other people to discredit sharon and to discredit me don't listen to them. It, Sharon is a great researcher. We've been friends. We have a very plutonic, very good friendship, but we've never once colluded on any kind of money stuff, for sure. And number two, um, we're both just doing our research, and that's all we do. Um, so anyway, in this picture Sharon took yesterday, you could actually see the the rim of this outer orb, right? This uh, Not orb, but this outer ring that we see around the sun all the time that I just showed you. But because she's using a special filter, she can actually see maybe perhaps what is up there. Pretty interesting. And there's our little guy again. Okay, here's one. This one I want to show you guys so desperately bad today because it shows something that they have been saying all along. I do not believe we're getting a direct look at whatever this thing is. See how it covers up the mountain? 
this is a refraction. It's a strange refraction, and it's given us this this return. Now, this is a very faint picture of what we've been seeing all along, okay? But when we see a picture like this, that is not a ref I don't believe that is a refraction when we see these things, okay? Let me give you another example. Here's one where it appears to be behind the mountain, okay? And this has also got two other objects in it and the big ring around the sun again. Again, very interesting, but do I think that's a direct view of the, pro of the planet? No, I think that this is probably the object and the optical systems that they're using make it look like a hologram. Okay. Here's an interesting one. Hawaii, I think. I don't know what to tell you about that one. Again, here's a great picture from Minx Island East from Friday. And this one, um, I'm getting all kinds of pictures because so many people are doing this research. But guess what? That looks like the Dave Top object up there, doesn't it? I can't tell from this picture, but um, I'm not so sure that that is a Dave's object up there too. So interesting stuff, right? And then we got this, and then and then we get these kinds of effects, right? We've been getting all these kind of strange effects. And here's one that's interesting because this would indicate that something is reflecting off the water from the direction indicated by the artist here. Nice, nice capture, guys. Whatever that is in the water, it's coming from over here somewhere. I agree with that. Look at the way that it's laying in the water. Now I'm going to look just a little bit at the study of the refraction orb that we've been seeing. And this is from uh, Minx Island, where we can actually see it rotating, and this one where we actually see color on the orb itself. Now these are all super, super compelling images, guys. And um, I, I, you know, but at the end of the day, guys, here's, here's the deal, okay? Um, this community has cried wolf so many times, okay? Wolf, wolf, wolf. There's a wolf. There's a wolf. I don't know if you've ever heard the old story about the boy that cried wolf until finally nobody believed him anymore. And when the wolf really came, it came and ate him. And one of the things I want to think about here, guys, with this community is we've got to stay away from the dates and specific events and trying to lock things together. I listen to artists that make a case for September 23rd. I do not believe anything significant will happen on 23rd. I think that's going to be a constant progression of events, just like it's happening right now. I believe the system's already here. I don't have to point out a date. It's been here for a while. The question is, what's going to happen in the next several months as we start to separate? I think that's really the question. Are we really going to go through a debris field? Are we really going to be feeling the effects of this, of the heat and radiation and all of those things that we talk about? Those are the things I'm thinking about. And so when I look at the Dave's Dobbs model, even Dave points to September 23rd as being an important date for his model, he's not basing it on prophetic um, stuff like David Mead would, would be doing. So I feel like it's inter important to get both points of view. But here's the thing. It sounds like we're crying wolf again. Nothing happens on September 23rd. It doesn't matter if, if, you, if I sit here and say that I don't believe in dates. It's already here all day long. They're going to try to say that I said September 23rd is the date of arrival. I never said that. I believe the last quarter of this year we're going to see a lot of stuff. I think the last quarter of this year is, to me, a telltale sign if this is the time where we're not crying wolf anymore, but this is the real deal. Have they conditioned the United States so much on September 23rd so that nobody even pays attention to it now? It's discouraging as hell, but it's true. I've been sucked up in these lies. I believed uh, Nibiru was going to come last year, right? I know people um, personally that believed Nibiru was going to come in 2007. We had Nancy Leader talking about it in 1993. Why would we be lying like this? Why would we be misdirected like this? Right? Well, again, I think that it's a psyop. I think that they're trying to be, trying to make us the people that cry wolf so many times that nobody listens to us. Let me give you a great example of why this is important. There's an entertainer named Joe Rogan. Have you ever heard of Joe before? Joe is a great podcaster. He used to be in the Fear Factor. Um, he was on a couple sitcoms. A uh, very famous guy. Um, he did the famous Alex Jones um, interview where Alex got high with him and, you know, caused a big controversy and blah, blah, blah. That was the most, by the way, the most viewed podcast in the history of podcasting was the Alex Jones, Joe Rogan. Um, so Joe Rogan has always been open to conspiracy theories. His best friend is Eddie Bravo, who's a complete flat earther, okay? 
to give you an example. Well, I love listening to Eddie and Joe go at it, but Joe in 2012 was up to his eyeballs in Nibiru. He believed it. He bought into the theory that 2012 would be the year that we would see it. And when it didn't happen, he was just like, man, I got conned, I got deceived. And he never touched the subject again. And uh, so he now takes, uh, he takes kind of an active role against conspiracy theories. Well, here's a guy with 2 million, 3 million listeners or whatever it is, who had been completely taken off the whole second solar system, binary solar system, because why? Because the whole world cried wolf in 2012. How many other people walked away, stopped preparing, stopped thinking about it, stopped living their day like it, it could not possibly be one of their last days? How many people did that? A lot. Well, I came into this knowledge in 2015, so I didn't have that baggage, right? So I come into it looking at it very objectively and looking at things like this, and they never saw stuff like this in 2012, guys. They never saw stuff like this in 1993. They never saw stuff like this in 2015, okay? So something definitely is different in 2017, but is it the per just the ongoing march towards the ultimate you know, events that are going to happen around this thing? Yeah, of course. The world is going to be hit by an asteroid again. The world will be, be affected by some type of the inner solar system thing at some time in its future. It's just proven, right? The question is it this year. That I'm not willing to put my, my reputation on. What I am willing to do, though, is watch the effects, stay close, get Dave Dobbs. I believe his model has a lot of validity, and that's why I'm staying close to it. And here's why David Dobbs is we're going to interview later today. Here's why Dave Dobbs' model is so compelling. Go back and look at video one and two that we did last week. Because everything that he's predicted has come to pass. Every time he predicts to see part of the system, it comes to pass. He never once thought that, um, you know, he never once thought that, that he could be somehow wrong. He never had that, that lack of humility or egotism that said that he couldn't be wrong. He just kept uh, accumulating data. And now what we're seeing, guys, is this in the sky again, just like he had predicted, okay? So now we want to watch this model closer to see if it still has validity to it, but it doesn't mean anything negative is going to happen. It just means we got to keep a really close eye on it. We can theorize what might happen. We can theorize what the world governments might do, but at the same time, live your life. Love the people around you. Don't let this consume your whole being. This is, a, this is a personal research website. We don't have any facts. Check everything we do. We're not saying that we have the ultimate answers. All we're telling is we're making some great, different, unusual observations on almost every front. Astrological, astronomical, um, scientific, satellite, photographs, ground effects, Schumann currents, gamma radiation. I mean, all of it points to something going on, guys. And it just so happens that this explanation, to me, fits everything very well. Stay tuned today for WSO. We have a lot coming. Take care.